Well, you're thinking about moving to Baltimore, Maryland, you don't want to miss this video. These are the top five mistakes I see so many buyers make when they're moving here. You definitely don't want to miss number five, so hang around for that one. And if you make a comment below, I'm going to give you my free buyer's guide, and this will answer all the questions that you have that wake you up in the middle of the night. All right, we're going to get rocking right now. Well, hey, I'm John Ruckman. I'm the Charm City Property Dude, and these are the top five things you definitely want to avoid when you're buying a house here. Do me a favor. Go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. It's right there. That's it, right there. <laughs> uh, you'd be doing me a huge favor. Uh, and hit the notification bell for all of these and all the, all the other great videos that are on this channel. All right, here we go. So number one mistake i see so many buyers make in this market is is they think that every house is negotiable and what i mean by that is is that uh, and i'm going to be brutally honest with you sometimes sellers they price their house exactly at what they need and there's no negotiation sometimes the sellers uh, price their properties at a point where they're looking for multiple offers and bids and so when you go into a house, you really need to listen to your realtor. Um, the other aspect is banks. When a bank has a short sale and the days of old foreclosures and short sales, you could negotiate. But now with the guidelines from Fe uh, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, um, when you go into a short sale, the price you see is the price that you have to bid or make an offer. And so many times people get frustrated because they're losing out on offers. Um, so that is the biggest mistake I see is thinking that every house is negotiable. And the first thing you think when you get into a house is that you're going to go ten or $15,000 below asking price when in this market you really should be doing list price and expect to go above. Now with forced closures and short sales, that's not necessarily the case, but uh, like I said before, sellers are pricing their houses right on the money of what they need or they're expecting multiple offers. Uh, I did see this a while ago where the agent started underlisting the house. So you see a house in a neighborhood that traditionally sells for say 325 and they listed the house at 299 or 250 and then they say something like they're only showing the house this Friday between you know like three and eight in the afternoon uh, it's a nice sunny day and then you get there there's 25 people there and you're thinking the price is at 250 no they're expecting the price to start there but they know that the people are going to overbid it is much easier to come up from a low price than it is to come down from an overpriced house so that's a tip for the sellers too but yeah that's the number one mistake i see that buyers make is thinking that every house is negotiable all right so number two mistake that i see a lot of buyers do here in baltimore maryland is that they they focus on the sizzle and not the steak and what i mean by that is is you walk into a house and you see that it's been all fixed up it's the best looking house you've seen but the unfortunate part is in really like a crappy neighborhood and all too often i see they're getting uh, enamored by the flash of the house, you know, uh, the granite countertops, the stainless steel appliances. Uh, while that is necessarily a good thing, but they overlook so many other things. Like, you know, if you get into a deep dive, you'll see that maybe the corners were cut wrongly the contractor you can tell a good contractor by the angles they cut on the molding if you look close enough you can say oh that was a good contractor the the, the angles line up um, so don't let the flash of the house uh, override your judgment when it comes to a house if the flash overrides like you're like this is a great house but the neighborhood or it's a busy road um, I know from personal experience I love this house love this house my wife and I went and looked at it and the problem was it was on a double two <laughs> a double yellow lane uh, road and when I say the tractor trailers would go past that house at like 90 miles an hour and the first thing out of my wife's head was the house is beautiful it's everything we want but we could never ever have kids here and we couldn't write we couldn't have pets because as soon as you let the pets out you're worried about them running into the road and there is no forgiving on this road so that is the number two mistake i see a lot of buyers make is that they 
overlook a great neighborhood because the house is not in tip-top condition but it's got solid bones and in the same respect they see this house that's been completely redone but the neighborhood is like it might take about five years for the neighborhood to become a mediocre neighborhood so uh, that's the number two mistake so the number three mistake I see that a lot of buyers make is they don't put down enough money on their down payment and what I mean by that is 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 they're calculating their mortgage payment on the other end and you do realize the more you put down the lower your mortgage payment is it's not only for the lower mortgage payment but sometimes in life things happen like for instance the city could go through and do the road or redo the sewer system inside around your house and guess who pays for that we all pay for that because then they raise your taxes well if your mortgage payment you didn't put enough down and your mortgage payment was really close to what your tip top end was then all of a sudden that special assessment comes through and puts you up say another two hundred dollars a month on top of your mortgage payment because of taxes then all of a sudden you're going to be in a financial strap where if you would just put down say ten thousand dollars more that would have lowered your price by a uh, you price by like a hundred two hundred dollars you see where I'm going with this so that is the number three mistake I see so many buyers do they under calculate their ability to repay the loan by not putting enough down so a good rule of thumb is is 20% down I realize that's a lot uh, and there's a lot of different programs and stuff that help with down payment assistance and stuff you can always reach out to me for a great lender because I know a few of them that have like the 321 program they also have DELP which is down payment assistance self down payment assistance and I do believe I have another video that actually describes the uh, down payment assistance part of this but you want to make sure this is tip number three make sure you put enough money down that way you can uh, uh, calculate for any unforeseen circumstances that happen in the future because look you're going to be there for you know three to five years at least that's the national average and uh, if you're going to be there for longer then you want to make sure the other part of this too is that when you put more money down you all of a sudden have some equity in the house so if, for instance if you're relocating in and then your your job decides they want to relocate you right back out well there's some costs associated with that and some money loss when you do that very quickly a lot of times when you move you should really Really calculate the fact that you're going to be there for at least three to five years before you start recouping your um, your profits or recouping some equity out of the house so that is tip number three <sighs> two mistake I see that most buyers make is that they want to lowball the crap out of the house they put in this ridiculously lowball offer in history uh, a lowball offer would have been like fifteen to two thousand dollars below asking price. Nowadays, everybody sees the three twenty-five mark and they want to go in at two ninety-nine, two eighty-five, and that is like you know tens of thousands of dollars lower. And usually, this unfortunately, our negotiating responsibility, fiduciary responsibility, is to get the best price and make everybody happy in the deal. And when you do a lowball offer like that, it immediately puts tension on the transaction so a lot of times if it, if the people are in dire straits to get out of the house you get the low ball offer which is great but then they're not going to show up for settlement you'll be there by yourself with your lender i know that's okay but a lot of times you want to put yourself in their situation would you want somebody to come in and give you you owe three hundred fifty thousand dollars and the first thing out of their mouth is they want to give you a three hundred thousand dollar offer you feel feel how that feels in the back of your throat so this is the number the second thing I see that most buyers do is they immediately come in on any house and if it's a house that you love and immediately throw in like a lowball offer it just really taints the whole process um, and mind you here's what else happens you throw you look at 10 different houses you find a house that you absolutely love the first thing you do is you come in with a lowball offer it pisses the other people off they don't want to negotiate with you anymore okay they kick you out they don't take you serious you still love the house and then you can't buy the house because all of a sudden they don't want to sell it to you now you move on to another house and guess what the other house is not going to be the exact same thing it's not going to have the exact same things the other house is you're constantly going to compare what you're doing from one house to the other meanwhile you'll talk about the first house that you lost because you decided that you're going to go in too low you see where this is going so make sure that if you find a house that you absolutely love you absolutely love it hmm, which one do i love you absolutely love this house then you want to make sure that you give it your best offer
And that is the second mistake I see a lot of buyers make. All right, so that leads us to the number one mistake that I see a lot of buyers do in this market, and that is when they buy the house, they don't consider the resale, that one day they're gonna have to sell the house. So if there was ever any problems that you thought of, so the, the first one was you let the flash of the house get to you and you bought in like a really bad neighborhood. Unless the neighborhood is transitioning, into a better neighborhood and you can see it like if you look down the streets and you see all the contractors are m marching right up the street fixing the different houses then you know the neighborhood is actually transitioning it's called urban renewal but one day when you buy a house one day you're going to be the home seller so you're going to have to think about the things that you don't like about the house and if the neighborhood's one of them then that's definitely going to be an issue for somebody else that comes in if for whatever reason, there's a problem with the house that continuously is a problem. Well, guess what? That's gonna be a problem for the next buyers as well. Um, I know there's a lot of different styles of houses and stuff. Um, it, whatever you find out about the house that you love is what the next buyer is gonna love. So you wanna pay attention to those facts. But the big thing I see a lot of buyers, mistakes they make is buying a house without consideration at one day and sooner or later they're going to have to sell the same house so those are the five mistakes there uh, i hope this video helps there's like a list of 13 i'm going to do another video on this on the mistakes that buyers make when they come into the area because there's so many but those are the top five that i could think of um, but this was a great video i like putting that together for you listen i get a lot of phone calls text messages and emails from folks just like you uh, i absolutely love it love it love it love it uh, if you call or text or email me don't worry i've got your back when it comes to real estate and do me a favor hit that like and subscribe button down below because then it lets YouTube get these videos and all the other great videos out to all the wonderful buyers that are coming into the area really appreciate that again I'm John I'm the Charm City property dude and go ahead and uh, I'm gonna try to do this right go ahead and check out this video or that video right there that one's really good 